Mingus Reedus. Is that a real name? That is a real name. Why Herman any, Reedus' son. Why would anyone name their son Mingus? Where does what are the origins of the name Mingus? Mingus. There are actually Minguses. Mingus, Mingus Reedus. He's a, a runway model. So when that whole Nepo baby vulture New York magazine thing uh, came out. He was one of the names on it. Might as well be speaking in Mandarin. I have no idea. Yeah, nobody knows what that means. Nepo, Zero. Nepo babies Zero. are like these the kids that are like. No, I got Cody. that part. Yeah, I, I got that part. The other part, Babies I just didn't Nepos. understand. Like the New Yorker, or whatever she said. I didn't. I get mean, it. have you never? Can you name a magazine, Tony? What is your problem? Why are we you doing magazines? Know, you don't know. But why are we doing magazines? You just don't know the name of publications. You sound like a New Yorker. Least. You know, you work in the media. Mm. You should know the names of major publications. Mingus. I mean, they're random. digital. Hey. It's not a New York elitist thing. <laughs> Mingus. The name Mingus is a boy's name of Scottish origin, meaning tenants of a manor. Right. What? Tenants of a manor. I don't like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. So Mingus is plural. Uh, no. Well, it's it is a singular name, but it means tenants of a manor. I can't believe we're still making Minguses. The person who named their kid Mingus probably was after Charles Mingus, though. The oh, the right, jazz player. Yeah, I'm sure the jazz pianist. Mingus. I hadn't considered that. What would you call like? My first thought is at school they're calling Mingus the Dingus, easily, right? Easily. That's a go-to. Dingus, ooh, like that, that kid got bullied. I don't care how rich he is. That's the great thing about school. The great thing. Doesn't matter how rich you are, man. They're going to get you. That's the great thing about school. Like, at that age, like, nobody Everyone cares that you're bullied. rich. Everybody's Everybody, getting roasted. Everybody's getting roasted. Kids man. are assholes. Yep. I was just going to say that. Kids, Kids are, are the worst. They man. are assholes. Anything that slightly Except distinguishes you from the pack, get back in here. Yep. Get back in here, you boob. Yeah, don't be different. Don't be out here. I it never got roasted being biggest. called a boob. Did they call you Tittingham in in school? By the of way, course Woody? they did. I, <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> thankfully, I mean, well, oh, thankfully, yeah. thankfully, I was, thankfully, I was a very skinny kid, so it like th- I, it would have been a disaster if you were ill. Yeah, oh, yeah. If, you know, so you got more shitting hams then. Yeah, shitting hams yeah. and yeah, every any anything with ham was there. All the ham insults. Yeah, came all the way. ham based <laughs> insults were there. Yeah, there was the, yeah any anything with my name. I had a surprisingly healthy relationship with it, though. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't allow. Unlike your relationship I, with ham, <laughs> uh, like the the teasing of children did not bother me as a as a child. I could see that. I could see that sociopathic. You have a like, thick skin <laughs> because you know you're better than everyone else. Why is else? that sociopathic? No, I like you. You're no, you're a sociopath, and so I could see it just bouncing. All off the you. people that called him shitting ham are now missing somehow. <laughs> and, and, and it allowed their me bodies to like have never been found. I, I enjoyed your mystery crate gag of you uh, fantasy booking me as a stripper. In oh, Las Vegas. Dan, did you, you hear that? That was, about? Re- that was wow. really funny. Did you hear about wow. that? Dan? I enjoyed that. I heard about it. I am envious, though. I think most people would be envious of Whittingham being a child who was immune to mocking. I think we would all love to have had that ability. No? Dan, what what'd they call you? What do you think? The same thing they're still calling me. It's uh, <laughs> it's a it's tard. Fat. It's a play on tard. It is not fat. No. <laughs> The thing about Witty is I see him being 30 years old, but like in middle school. Yeah, oh. So like he's the same just a, person. Uh, just a smaller version. But just right? like at nine years old, he's yeah. like, guys, uh, you know, I've been reading New York Magazine and uh, it's incredible. <laughs> the things you find about Mingus. He's Mike Greenberg. I, you did make him into Greeny. No, yeah, but I, 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 I had the same view. Like it's him with that haircut, those glasses, wearing a suit and tie. But like the smallest, like just a, a ten-year-old version, like just but immune to your criticism. Yes, immune to uh, immune as a nine-year-old to being told he is shitting ham, <laughs> or I'm a nerd or whatever. Like nerd dork, stuff, ner- nerd dork. None of that stuff bothered me. Just like yes, agreed. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> that's, hey, and that's the secret to the kids listening right now. That's the secret. Whatever they call you, just agree with them, and then they'll get bored. The fun is in the ones that want to fight back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now is, we got one. It's a great neutralizer if they're calling you a name and your answer mm. is agreed. <laughs> what? You, you don't think I don't know this? You think I don't know this? That I've, I, I'm the one who read the book in the class. I'm, I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm but, aware that, that but I But no, this, this is, it's book. annoying because you think that you're, the things that they're making fun of you for, you feel like make you better than everyone else. So it really is just... It's They're feeding your ego about true. your intelligence. I, a I little have bit, never, I, think. I have never purported 
to lord intelligence over anybody. Purported. I, like I've, I, like <laughs> I, I don't, 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 I don't like hey, to, this is America, I Jack. Don't like, I don't like to, I don't like to wheel, like, Tertiary I, lads. I, what I, was that? I think that's like, a, it's a very ugly characteristic if people who are well read or get good grades or whatever, like, you know, insult other people. I think that's like one of the ugliest I, things that people can do. See, that one, I wish I did that. When I was a kid, I, I tried to hide that I was getting good grades. I was like, oh, like be like, oh man, that test is killer. Yeah, man. Because <laughs> like, you wanted to seem like you were cool I, and no, not like I, Whittingham. I wanted to seem like I was one of the guys. That was my thing. Like, oh, I'm just one of the guys. That, was, that that's what kids in school. That's yeah. what you're encouraged to do. You're just you're encouraged to be part of the pack. Yeah. See, you said don't ever stray. Making fun of someone's like intelligence is one of the ugliest things you could do. I think making someone making fun of someone's appearance is one of the ugliest things you can do. <clears throat> Billy Gill, because those are out of the person's right control unless they're super rich. But when I was younger, my sister used to call me Snaggletooth because I had a Snaggletooth, nice. and I had no comeback for that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I do have a Snaggletooth, and it's hideous. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, what, I, what do you want me to do? Bishop Dork 9, checkmate. Exactly. <laughs> Billy has walked us into a perilous situation with uh, Bill's Mafia not getting that any of this will be a joke for us on Josh Allen has a stupid face because it's just the dumbest possible thing that we can do. And I don't think that Billy understands the hornet's nest that we are walking into. These people do well, not. you're walking into, Dan. Yeah. 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 Billy's yeah. not walking into this. Oh, you. Honest. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is going to me, be me, evidently, because I continue to get bombarded with uh, just stuff that is, of course, coming after my physical appearance and just everything me related uh somebody writes in josh allen isn't like he's loved as are the bills he also has more playoff wins since he was born in 1996 than the dolphins you know who is mostly disliked you, you. dan lebitar ah, oh! got... hey it's billy i'm in the kitchen what what did i walk us into <laughs> you walked us into this television rating. Go ahead and tell them, I mean, uh, what it is, how much of Buffalo is investing in Bills Mafia, in regional identity, into We Are America's Most Beloved Team right now. Hi, Billy. This is Amin. Uh, this is according to Austin Carp at Austin Carp. Buffalo drew a 47.4 local rating for their Bill, the, the Bills wildcard win over the Dolphins on CBS to lead all markets. Number two was Kansas City with a 28-2. Cincinnati, West Palm Beach, and New Orleans round out the top five. Fort Myers, Naples, six. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, not in the top ten. They doubled Kansas City. They're, all of Buffalo is watching well, every single... They, Josh Allen... Doubling. Quintupled Miami, it would appear. We jo got other stuff to do. Josh Allen... Yeah, it we're was all, cold this weekend. Yeah, we're all windsurfing. Josh Allen... <laughs> Josh Allen... All of us is a show. It was crazy. On top of each other. On one, yeah. It was cold out. It was bonfire weather. We made uh, s'mores. I fell in the ocean. Bonfire of the vanity. I've got a s'mores question for oh. you guys because Greg Cody uh, says that he was indignant because his wife and granddaughter do not like marshmallows that have any char on them when they're eating them. What? He is saying those edible pillows need to have a char on them. He said that they only wanted a warmth and a light dust. They did what? not want any char on their marshmallows. It's caramelized. Yeah. Put How do you on. not char it? I'm sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, the question is, what are you watching out there on First Take? Oh, Dan, great question. So right now they're doing a segment called Quick Takes. So they have to go and, and Molly ask a question and they have to give quick takes, which means you know, fast paced type of thing. As you can imagine, things have been going very slow on quick takes. We're not jumping from topic to topic very quickly. The first topic that was brought up was the Australian Open. They were talking about Rafael Nadal, and I guess he may be injured no, no, no. again. He lost last night. Yeah. He's out. He has a hip injury. Adios. Well, there you go. So injury. Thank you for mentioning that. It's his that. earliest exit in, in, I think, since 2007 or something like wow. that. He lost to a 27-year-old American, Mackenzie McDonald. So pretty big upset last Dumb night. Dumb name. Jesus. What, what is wrong with all of Dumb you people? Name. Why are you so mean? This is a double mick. Billy? Yeah, so anyways, so Doggy went first, and he said, here's the thing with Nadal. There's always something. 
Federer never does this. Get out of here or get out there and figure it out. He doesn't like the injury situation to which Stephen A said he's won 22 titles. And then Marcus Spears said, my mom is a big tennis fan. She loves Nadal, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> then they moved on what? to Tom Brady. That, 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 <laughs> I love that as a, a way to get out, like to, to abstain from the conversations. My mom's a huge fan. So. <laughs> my mom's a huge fan. I just love the construct of television. Marcus Spears, your thoughts on Rafael Nadal? Dull. His mom's None. a big fan. None thoughts. As as Mad Dog Russo, the reason that we're tuning in, says hang tough, Rafael Nadal. Yeah. I understand that your feet aren't going to work properly later in life, but you need to keep playing through those figure injuries. It out. Quote, go out there and figure it out. He drives me crazy, was Mad Dog's quote on the <laughs> It's also, they're only talking about that because that's one of Mad Dog's areas of expertise. Yeah. I can't imagine Stephen A is endorsing the Australian Open being on the C block of first take. It's on ESPN. It's a humongous tournament. Uh, Stephen Stephen A was all over everywhere today because his book came out. So he was on Good Morning it America, did? Good Morning America, The View, and then he did first take and uh, and got Marcus Spears' opinion on Rafael Nadal. Uh, what do you? What else do you have, Billy? So then we took our quick hits over to Tom Brady. Marcus says that he thinks it's time for him to ride off in the sunset. Quote. Take a ride, Brady. And Stephen A was talking about it. Stephen A says he has sources. He doesn't think that he's going to take a ride. And Stephen A said he thinks the Dolphins might be a fit. But he was talking to Keyshawn, who said the Jets and the 49ers might work out. And then Molly said, I think we should rebrand this segment to not quick takes because you guys are taking forever. <laughs> Back to you. All right. Thank you, Billy. Keep us abreast of all the things going on on a Mad Dog Wednesday. Do you know what Stephen A. Smith's book is called? I do not. Straight Shooter. A memoir of second chances and first takes. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith has never been handed anything, nor was he an overnight success. Growing up poor in Queens, the son of Caribbean immigrants and the youngest of six children, he was a sports-obsessed kid who faced a number of struggles from undiagnosed dyslexia to getting enough cereal to fill his bowl. <laughs> As a basketball player at Winston-Salem State University, he got a glimmer of his true calling when he wrote a newspaper column arguing for the retirement of his own Hall of Fame coach, Clarence Gaines. <laughs> Talk about reporting. <laughs> Stirring it up from the beginning. Smith hustled and rose up from a high school reporter at the Daily News, New York, to a general sports columnist at the Philadelphia Inquirer in the 1990s before getting his own show at ESPN in 2005. After he was unceremoniously fired from the network in 2009, he became even more determined to fight for success. He got himself retired two years later. Well, rehired, excuse me. <laughs> I thought retired, that doesn't sound right. You should read the Audible. <laughs> <laughs> he really with should. His, with his razor sharp intelligence and fearless debate style, found his role on the show. He was destined to start right on first take, the network's flagship morning program. I think we should get an excerpt for Amin to read as oh. an audio book. It might be an excerpt here. Uh, so that uh, we can get a little more of the Stephen A. story. Uh, we will check back in with Billy in moments, but I wanted to ask the group something that made me genuinely curious as I saw, and forgive my ignorance here, an outlet called Puck News hmm. had an interview with Sam Bankman Freed, the guy who's just an enormous fraudster and, um, you know, he uh, basically one of the great financial frauds in the history of our country with FTX. And it got me to thinking, right, if I were in that position, my fear would be such that I wouldn't be granting interviews. And the question that I wanted to ask the group as I see what the politician George Santos is staying in office with, which is a shame. Nothing this man has put on his resume is true. And at any other point in my lifetime other than now, that person would have would have resigned in disgrace 55,000 lies ago. But we are now in a different place than I've ever lived, which is you just stick your face in the shame. And whether you're Matt Gates or anybody else, you just keep doing the job. And the question I have for everybody listening to this is, when did that change? 
The, the idea that the way to push through shame is just to be so shameless that no one can actually touch you or move you if you're just resigned to being uh, immune to the shame. He sat next to her for 19 years. He's the pioneer. He's the he's the he's the visionary. You you are claiming that everything that's happening right now in America is Stugatz was 19 years early to just keep doubling down on the fraudulence. He you're you're claiming he's the Christopher Columbus of <laughs> discovering how to be shameless. Also a fraud, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> double fraud. No, these are the unintended consequences of Stugatz's life, particularly here in South Florida. Just creating this environment of shameless fraudulence. Is it weird to you to see, though? Because at any point in my life, Santos would have been gone 500,000 lies ago. Mm -hmm. Is is Trump the modern day bringer of this? Just lean into it. Or is there something before that that would indicate that this is coming, that resigning in disgrace is not something that people are going to do anymore? Because the environment has been created where you can, your, your fraudulence, right, rather than be a scarlet letter, becomes actually a badge of honor, right? Donald Trump paid no taxes, yeah. Shows how dumb the, the it's it's the Chappelle it's, bit. It's, where well, it's Chris Cody being the visionary of Zion's yeah. shoe breaking is good for Nike because yes. any attention gets your name out there. It yes. doesn't matter what the attention is. It, it look, I I think you could say it started with Trump in the sense that the coverage that he got early in his in the re nomination. Race, campaign in the campaign just to get the Republican nomination because he was a joke at the beginning of that that campaign, but they kept putting him on because it's like yeah it's kind of funny. Look look at this guy. Look at how, how ridiculous yeah, he, he commanded is. attention. And all that did was it kept them in there and got more and more people who that message resonates with. So Santos is just merely following what has been proven throughout at least a certain segment of the American population, which is not only will they not shame you for this, they're like, yeah, it just shows how, yeah, you tell them, see how messed up it is? This guy's proven it. I can trust him because he lies like me or whatever. <laughs> whatever that, that feeling is. I can that trust him? You think that that's what, you think that there is a groundswell of I can trust that man who lies about every single thing. Mike Ryan does say of Stugatz, it's the most honest relationship I have because I know he's always lying. And also think about Stugatz, one of the most popular characters on this show, right? One would think that this man would be detestable. That none of like, oh, how can you work with him? And yet it works somehow. In the last year, I've had at least seven examples of those where I want to strangle him. And yet, he calls me, we talk for 30 minutes, and I love him again. Yeah. I, I, I love Stu Gatz hey, for reasons passing understanding. Do we think that the congressman has that same effect on people, I though? doubt it. He doesn't seem like a very charming <laughs> fellow, i got to be honest. In defense of Stu Gatz, he's got a lovability that you have to admire. <laughs> but like, I do think that this playbook... I think has been exaggerated and taken to a degree of scandal that maybe we didn't see before. But I mean, Clarence Thomas is on the Supreme Court, despite very, very public allegations and a very divided vote in the Congress. Bill Clinton survived the mm -hmm. scandal that befell him. People surviving political scandals is not completely unprecedented. It's just more like the defiance of the number of things where normally shame governs almost everyone. But the current incentive structures are, particularly for the Republican Party, are like, we don't ever acknowledge that we're wrong. We don't ever acknowledge that we don't ever apologize. We don't ever say that the other side has a point. We just persist. And if we won, we got that seat. And all Kevin McCarthy view viewed him as was another see, vote, see, another see, another yep. vote towards speaker and another vote towards whatever another agenda. Another vote towards speaker and then another vote towards speaker and then another, another vote, vote towards, towards speaker. speaker. And then another vote towards speaker. And then another. And then another vote. And then another. <laughs> Sixteen more times. And then another. Yeah. And then and another. Then and then another. And then another. And then another. And then another. Then then another. And then another. And then the final vote for speaker. <laughs> but like, and then the vote for the agenda. Like they just like 
Kevin McCarthy doesn't give a shit about what Matthew Santos is doing. He just views him as a George, vote. George, that's a fine. George, George, George whatever. Oh, I'm, Matt I, Gates. I, I, oh, we don't no, know. No, that was the presidential candidate in the West Wing season seven. Oh. But, but, uh, oh, 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 and and also, we don't know Santos' real name because nothing point. about him Good is point. true. Well, we know nothing the, about him. What is the accountability for lying now, though? Like, what is the way to hold people accountable just for blatant lies? Because this is someone who you'd think some of the things that he lied about would have come out before the election. They did in some local papers. It didn't gain a ton of national traction. You'd think they would be things that would make someone unelectable, and they weren't. And now, what is the method to hold him accountable by if you need Republicans also to... Losing in two years. ...help oust him from his seat? It's he's, just he's, there's he's, no... Yeah. He's, he's going to be a congressman for two years, and then he'll probably get voted out because that's something of a swing district, but... He's going to be a congressman for two years, and no nothing will stop that. Going back to what it is that we were doing on Stephen A. Smith, because Amin likes doing voices, can I put together a top five list of voices you wish you had and a top five list of voices you're glad you don't have? Can we do this? Can you get the fanfare here? Because Amin loves doing voices. There's a secret hidden... Um, impressionist he wants to be frank caliendo as a second career uh and which one would you like to do first top five voices you wish you had or top five voices you're glad you don't have voices i wish i had that was the original one i came up with and then i thought of the ones that i wouldn't like and that came afterwards uh, what does wishes you don't have yeah, mean no wish i had is the first one i and get that the second list is glad i don't have what does that mean though i'm glad my voice doesn't sound like this person these five people oh. or six. Oh Jesus! Like yeah, it. number five, OLI actually, Lawrence Fishburne. You Is this to, what you, you have want? To say them in uh, the these voice. are the ones I want. You okay. have to say them. I don't have the oh. voice. I wish I had okay, it. Okay, I, I got it. Sorry, <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne always can sound like everything he says sounds serious and like don't mess around. Like Lawrence Fishburne walks in and tells us to do something, everyone's going to start doing it. Like, they're not going to ask any questions. Like, who are you? I don't answer to you. It's like, he, he sounds so... I would probably ask why Lawrence Fishburne is there, but... No, no, wouldn't. Then I would do whatever he says. Yep. Did right. he sound like that in Fled? <laughs> Future cinephobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What cinephobe? Uh, let's do that a little bit later. If I've worn you out That's on twice. this, do you no, realize just, how just, old the joke is? I, like you, you were five thousand times past the old joke, and now you've finally gotten tired of your yeah, own joke. I just it, it, like it. Sometimes the timing isn't great. I do it when I have timing. You don't. You just uh, you just uh, want to drop in the middle. Wow! Of it. wow. Because okay. I've thought Jeez. every time you've used it before now, it's never had time. It's had That's meaner than anything any Bills in fan has said to Dan in the last twenty four hours. By the way, Dan, you have great timing. Still outside the lines. No, we're now at number five. Brian Adams. Everything I do, he's got this graininess, this constant graininess. Like he went to a concert and was screaming. But now it's like a week later and his voice is kind of coming back, but it's still not all the way back. It's always there. And I'm like, oh, man, that's such a cool voice. The Marlboro Reds. Is that what it does? Cowboy Killers. Oh, man. Maybe I need to start. Number four. Danny McBride. Anything he says sounds hilarious. He could read ingredients off the back of, uh, you know, a, a, a food package. Chicken sandwich with club sauce. Jim Carrey's birthday was yesterday, and it got me to thinking about whether any of those movies would have been funny with anyone other than oh. him, just because of his level of talent. Well, I mean, no. I mean, the, the physical comedy that he does that isn't just fat guy falls down like Chris Farley was, is, is just next level. I mean, you're talking about the greatest among the greats of physical comedy when we talk about Jim Carrey, uh, and also a very funny guy on top of that, not a guy who's leaning on that as the the extent of his uh his stick but are those money are those movies that are classics could anyone else have made them classics no. any of the jim carrey movies that no. that people think of that way not truman show but the ones where he's being funny yeah like ace ventura right like, yeah all the of mask. them like just a singular yeah. talent that uh that went to a he's he's been he's gone dark he's done some movies recently that are not funny at all unusual choices but mcbride's that for you where but just his, anything his voice, he says is his funny. his voice and, is funny like him talking is funny and i see it every time with other people watching him even people who are not familiar with his work the moment he starts talking people laugh because it just sounds funny number three keith david 
good one. The Marines, right? He does, or what is the Marines? The few, the proud, the, the Marines. The few, the proud, the Marines. That voice is so deep. And, gossi, gossi. and just, oh <laughs> man. If I could sound like Keith David, I'd be out here talking all the time. He's doing Kim Burns documentaries now. Is he? You are, anyways. Yeah. Number two, Liam Neeson. No. No. Oh, my God. He says the name Lenore about 8 billion times in the Taken franchise because that's the name of his ex-wife played by Famke Jensen. By the way, Taken 2, tomorrow on Cinephobe. Make sure you catch that. Cinephobe? What, what Cinephobe? There you go. All oh, right. Man, no, that's the right timing. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> James Earl Jones. Or maybe I should say Morgan Freeman. I don't know. No, James, James Earl tie. Jones. James Earl Jones. What kind of top five list is that? What? A top five voices I wish I had. What what would you have? I don't have any. Yeah, exactly. Top five voices you're glad you don't have. Okay. Uh, is there OLI outside? There is in? an OLI. Richard Jefferson. <laughs> Ouch. Bad fair. <laughs> Ouch. I'm sorry, Richard. I, let me explain why. Richard is a, a smart guy, right? But his voice is so annoying that he makes good points and people automatically disagree with him. Just because of his voice. I'm convinced. If Richard had any other voice in the world, or maybe, oops, excuse me, oops, uh, maybe maybe not any other voice, but a lot of other different voices. Ah! (laughs) Yes, Billy. Talking about if the Lamar and the Ravens are headed for a divorce, Dan, and I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't paying attention because I was on Amazon buying Stephen A's book, which will be arriving tomorrow. But they went to commercial break. Oh, they're back from break. Oh, but Monty's there. They're going to talk about what made Mad Dog mad. So that's coming up. So I'll have an update for you shortly. Okay, thank you. Back to you. Uh, thank you. Number Didn't f- Rafa make him mad? I'm, <laughs> is there something else? There's other things. There's always something else. Number four, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Muppet. <laughs> Good shout. <laughs> Very good. good. I, I do not want to sound like Patrick Mahomes. Uh, put it on the poll at Lebitard Show. Would you want Patrick Mahomes' arm if you had to also have his voice? This is so mean. It. I don't like this list. I mean, look, man. It's just voices I'm glad I don't have. It doesn't mean that they're bad voices. It just means I'm happy I don't have those voices. Number three, Patton Oswalt. Really? Again. Funny guy, brilliant comedian, pretty good actor. I don't know if you saw I Love You, Dad. That's a really, or I Love My Dad, or whatever. It was a pretty good movie, but also very creepy, but also (laughs) highlights everything about Patton Oswalt's voice that I don't like, which is Patton Oswalt has a voice that just screams to be bullied. Like, I felt a bully in me, like, rising up. I just want to bully. wanted to bully. I want to bully Patton 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 Oswalt Oswalt. because of his voice. Just because of his voice. Hearing his voice. But again, I love his work. I think he's great. I'm just glad I don't have his voice. Number two, Gronk. What's wrong with Gronk's voice? This is, now, this one's going to sound mean, Jess. Buckle up. Oh, this one. He sounds dumb. I can't speak to his intelligence. I don't know. Now, I don't know anything. I've never met him. I've never had a conversation with him. But Gronk, there's not much like I said, everything that Lawrence Fishburne says sounds authoritative, and you're like, oh, yes, sir, or whatever. Everything Danny McBride says sounds hilarious. Everything Gronk says sounds dumb. He could literally be out there like solving uh, the cure to cancer. No, he couldn't. It, no, I'm just saying he could be doing that and like doing a TED talk on how he did it. And I'd just be like, you dumb son of a bitch. I'm not sure, though, that that's his voice and not just the things he's actually saying no, that it's, are affecting you it's, that way. It's it's his voice. It's, he sounds like this. Duh! That's his voice in my head. All Wait the linemen are sexy. They got that sexy body and everything. Duh! All the linemen are sexy. They got that sexy body and everything. Now, imagine, imagine for a second Lawrence Fishburne saying that. You'd be like, oh, good point. Number one, Dan Levitard. <laughs> you did not bring that in there. <laughs> wow. He just asked me if I'm a bubble wrap guy, and I thought to myself, who's not a bubble wrap person? Like, doesn't everyone love doing that with bubble wrap? Claire does. She is a big time bubble wrap girl. You think you're going to find a lot of uh, a lot of people who don't enjoy doing that? I don't think so. I think uh, I think everybody is a bubble wrap person. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is everyone a bubble wrap person? Now, are, are you guys a one at a time? 
Sometimes I go ham. I just step on it. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I like the feeling of my hands, though. When you do it with your feet, you step on it, you sit on it, you, you lose that sensation. It's all about the feel for me. It's not just the sound. But also, I do love the sound when they rapid fire. Like firefight. Oh, my God. They're shooting. Do you like the big bubbles or the little bubbles? I like the big bubbles, man. I yeah. like the way they feel in my hand. Mm. Do you like the uh, the big thing, like the big, bu- like, they're not even bubbles. They're like sort of packing, oh, yeah. packing balloons yes. that come in an Amazon package. Yeah, those scare me. Not a like, Wait, I, I enjoy like the, the destruction of them. Are you my dog? What? No, it just it makes it very loud. Like I'm concerned of how loud the noise yeah. is going to be. Oh yeah, that's and, that's the, you know that's like the if, point. if someone like comes running out of the next door apartment because I made such a loud noise or it's like it's it's a loud kind of explosive Boom, thing. Yeah. yeah, you strike me as a very conscientious neighbor. Like you're worried a lot about what the neighbors around you might think. Like you have your TV at like a lower volume where you can't necessarily hear everything because yeah. you're worried that you'd cause some sort of commotion that would frighten the neighbors. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll like listen to music while I'm in the shower or whatever on a, on a Bluetooth speaker or as we've uh, chronicled before, podcasts. And uh, and I put like a boot and like I will start the shower and realize, oh no, this is too loud. And so I like I have to turn it down or like get out of the shower. Do you the put quick, on headphones. Do like, do like the, the quick dry of the hands so you can hit the button twice for it to go down. Yeah, I don't. And I have a sound bar too, which is completely unnecessary. It's just I, the hands, though. The rest of you is a wet, nude Whittingham yes, scrambling exactly. across yes. the bathroom. Towel laid out on the floor. Kind Lighter. of like, it's sort of like from mid Nuding forearm. <laughs> he seems like that never nude to me, also. I, yeah, yes. He's got his jorts on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean I, I'm nude in the shower, but not in many other moments. I will confess to that. I'm mostly never nude. <laughs> rarely nude. Yes, I'm rarely nude. There you go. Billy, do you have any hey. more? Even though you're in this room, do you have any more updates from first your all your first take reporting? No, we week? never got to what makes Mad Dog mad. We started just breaking down the regular games this weekend. I mean, who cares? I, What's getting Mad Dog mad? That's what I want to know. That's too bad that you yeah. had to leave before finding mm-hmm. out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I no. continue to catch uh, all of your hatred. This from Bill's Mafia Don. <laughs> we live in a world where this guy. And it's my picture can justifiably hate on Josh Allen because of his stupid face. This guy looks like a fucking moron. Does he not own a mirror? And Billy, I have just found out there is a billboard that we can purchase near the stadium. I have just learned uh, from Metal Lark. Who told you that? Uh, Cynthia. What's she doing? she actually knows shit too. Yeah. Yes, it's it's that's surprising. scary. Uh, well, and I've agreed to do it. There's so. a few names where, like, oh, if you man. said it, we, I'd be like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, if Gino Fuentes is like, yeah, we got to. B-. I'd be like, I don't know, Gino. Whoa. But Cynthia, Whoa. I just had to throw a Fuentes under the bus. She bus. she says they had to it's go. The billboard Mike. company has to go to legal just to see if we can get uh, just that. Josh Allen has what? a stupid face, but if it can't be that, we're gonna find out something to put right near the stadium. That is going to get us further embroiled with Bill's Mafia on not realizing that we're joking. You know, but, you know what you should put up there? A mirror. That'll really hit home with them. <laughs> These like, guys are obsessed with mirrors. I know, that's really? what I'm saying. Like, Does he own a mirror? And then they high five each other. You told him, Bill's Mafia Don. That's right. I watched The Godfather. I know how the power structure works in the Mafia. But see, we're the Bill's Mafia, so I would be the Don. Everyone else has to pay respects to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. I'm Which a conciliary. In, in, in a parking lot. Wow, you really amused yourself. You are cracking you yourself, yourself, amused up. yourself Dude, on that one. Hey, man, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> that my daughter's riding in a parking lot. <laughs> Instead of like the, the cascading champagne over like a pyramid of glasses. It is possible that this guy. blue ribbon. <laughs> on this, the day I broke a vertebrae jumping onto a table <laughs> at the Bills Dolphins game. It is it, possible his name is just Don and he likes the Bills. Yeah, that's true. You guys are making this worse for yourselves. Like, keep bad mouthing the Bills Mafia, then you're putting up billboards. Like, they're going to keep coming after you. You don't it's want that. It's only going to be signed Billy Gill. So, they're I don't know. They're coming after why. you, Billy. You've gotten like legit threats on Twitter, which, by the way, not I, cool. I have, yes. I, I just enjoy me, the me fact. Me too, by the way. And I didn't yeah. say anything. <laughs> I just enjoy the fact that like these people have regular jobs. Like, you know, they're, you know, working somewhere and like, hey, uh, Don, can you help me with the stuff in storage here? Like, yeah, hold on for a second. I got to send this message. Let this guy know he doesn't own a mirror. 
Buffalo is agitated, and we are inviting a whole lot of not getting the show. We're inviting a lot of it. You want, Whenever we end up sprinkling into a new fan base or a new group of people who take sports very seriously and aren't here for our nonsense, it's the best intersection for us to arrive at right until the death threats, right up until we've got to hire more security because Bill's fans are taking this. What is presently happening, you have to understand, this is generational. Yeah generations being laughed at at your your <laughs> favorite sports thing and this Josh Allen is probably the most popular popular athlete they've ever had in the in the history of the city OJ Simpson was popular yeah OJ Simpson had a Jesus. movie career that's another billboard we got to put up <laughs> I mean you also no. cape for this man once upon a time <laughs> What's on the OJ billboard? I, I, OJ I Simpson know. was popular here? <laughs> yeah. Something. I want to put up several billboards. I don't want it to just be one, and I want to sign them all, Billy Gill. Because yeah. no, I want see. him to I want him to know what it is that he does when he causes me anarchy. Like when you bring this, you're bringing I've this. Done no such thing. Yeah, how annoyed is Dan where he's willing to plug down thousands of dollars just to prove this point to you, Billy? What point? I came in yesterday, like, you're gonna go after Josh Allen today. I'm like, eh, and he's like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, okay, I guess we are. He looks like a dumb dumb. <laughs> Wait Boom. a minute. You're going to put on me or Tony? Did you say that about me or Tony? Tony said that? Because I sure as shit didn't. You're claiming that I that I and you're saying out loud because you so badly don't want to do this, and now you're stuck at the end of the show where you realize Cynthia's on the case. How did I get brought brought into this? What did I? That's do? what I'm saying. You're an accomplice. Also, OJ is still in their Hall of Fame, and I think he's on their hey. Wall of Fame at the stadium. There you go. On their website, also. Also, still looking. What is the oh, uh, What is the hashtag that we can put on social media so people give us ideas of what to put on five billboards? Bill's bill, or Bill's Five? billboard, Billy's Billy's no, no. Bill's no, billboard. No, 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 Bill's Bill's billboard. <laughs> yeah, Bill's, great. Bill's and the do apostrophe. all of those because we'll easily be able to find them. Yeah. They're, Billy's they're, billboard. They're Bill's Bills. Bill's. They're very cheap. Billsboard. They're very cheap, Bill. They're not expensive. We could do Shocker. it all. We could do it all over Buffalo, and we should. Uh, the problem is availability. Hell it's yeah. not. It's not cost. Well, yeah. and it's also expediency because, like Billy said, you know if. No, the, Cynthia said we could get it done by the end of the week. <laughs> you might have and to. And that should be up? Yes. Wow. Okay. Let's get on this. Cynthia's see. going to be on a ladder Wait. painting it herself in that time frame. That's <laughs> pretty 3 quick in turnaround. Buffalo. Are these the electronic billboards that like keep flipping? You know what I'm talking about? Does it matter? It does matter it because does matter, I want yeah. one that's permanent. That's just that. Well, it's us. not going to be par per permanent. No, not it'll permanent. be a month. No, no, I know. But I'm saying like the electronic billboards, when you're driving, it'll be like, Miller Lite, and then all of a sudden KFC, and and it'll just keep flipping because it's it's basically a, a screen show, right? A, a slideshow. But the permanent ones, I don't mean permanent in terms of forever. I'm talking about like the old school. Someone painted it up. It ain't flipping. That's just that's just us. But it can be done quickly, evidently, and we are going to try and get it up, get them up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Finally, a sound effect around here that's not this useless thing of you're wait, knocking it over wait. or the bell that you're knocking over for no reason. Fine, the bubble wrap that you came in oh, here and stuff. Yeah. Finally, a useful sound you have found. You are such a terrible variety act as somebody who could have existed in the 1920s when there was only audio doing his own one man show with sound effects. So I was walking down the street when I slipped on a banana peel. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it was right by a bakery. My order was up. <laughs> All of a sudden, the no the no goes down the block started shooting. Oh, sorry. oh, that's I, too I bad. It, it would have been so good. <laughs> and you took out too many of them. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done that. See, like tweets like this from Diddy Stark say <laughs> at Levitard Show. Ask Juju Gotti about real Buffalo. He knows. He can tell you about the dangerous game, but please put up a billboard signed by Billy Gill and watch what happens to him. It ain't going to be pretty. It won't be taken lightly. They won't see the joke. Trust me. Uh, and I've been getting the same and, thing, except I didn't say Josh Allen had a stupid face. <laughs> yeah, but you're signing my death warrant. Uh, you said it, not me. 
Love this abdication of responsibility from everyone. Well, he in doesn't want to do it. Is the thing now? Now we've gotten to consequences, Coward. which no one around here likes. No one around here because now we're there. We're there where we're gonna put up the billboard. Well, so now, how are we doing it? No, it's like I light a candle and you go and light a building on fire. You're like you did this. It's like no, I lit a candle. Like I didn't do this. But Billy, to be fair, you don't know that he's soaked in gasoline. You came in here lighting a candle, <laughs> knowing he's just The drenched. podcast episode was titled... That's Jer Bear's fault. And yeah, to be the, honest with you, I'm going to be talking to his direct about, report to see let, about what his let, situation see, is. It's Dan's fault. It's Billy's fault. It's Tony's fault. It's Jeremy's fault. Who else do we put this on? Winnie? You, because you're here. Tony, you're here this week. You're not first. normally here. Yeah. Yeah. Tony was playing first. <laughs> Only one person said it. No one told you to say it. I well, it's know. one of the billboards going to say, I drafted Josh Allen on my fantasy team. <laughs> we can Signed do that. Billy Gill. Sure, we can. That's fine. We go. can. If, if it makes you feel like that person threatening you is going to say, well, that makes it okay. Now I won't harm him. It's sort of like you're wine through Buffalo. It's a journey. Like the journey of the billboards takes you to the end. And the end is, but I drafted on my fantasy team. At the end, that person no longer wants to th tweet a threat to Billy Gill. What is the proper way to do this so that we aren't, as we always are, the group of people who talk <laughs> about a thing without actually doing it? I mean, apparently Cynthia's on the case. I'm washing my hands of all of this. So I'm trying to. Why is everyone advocating this? Everyone like, lean in. It's no. time to <laughs> lean in. No. The show is feuding with Buffalo now. If this company fails, how am I going to get another job? There are so many sports teams and athletes that I would happily make fun of. Josh Allen's just not on the list. Pick any AFC North Coward. team and I'm in. Steelers. Let's it. make fun of some of the Steelers. Steelers. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Is there any team in the AFC North? Well, obviously, except for the one No, no, you didn't say obviously. Yeah. It's too late for, for Fine, caveats. do it. I don't care. I'll be the one sending the threats on Twitter then. <laughs> what, <laughs> is, what is the hashtag that we can invite? Because evidently we could get this done before the end of the week. And this is one of the things. At ESPN, the backstory, amazingly enough, was we were talking for weeks and weeks about how to do this with LeBron on air. They were not listening to the show. No. Nobody was listening to the show. It's why we were able to get away with some of those things. So they suspended me mm. for not giving them any warning that we were actually doing this. Other than saying it on air. For on several weeks. That is correct. <laughs> and an executive ends up getting in trouble because he wasn't listening to the show. He was overseeing. And uh. so, but I got suspended. Did Skipper suspend you? Did you have a conversation with Skipper about that? Or you uh, just got the word? No, he, he, I, he didn't tell me. He's the one who pulled the final trigger on the suspension, but I'm sure he did it with a smile on his face because I was hired to do things like that. Yeah, you, revisionist history. At the time, Skipper was clearing out his desk like, God damn it! What's wrong with this Levitar guy? <laughs> but now there's no interference and it doesn't require weeks. We are here. It has happened on air and it is available to us before the end of the week. So what should the hashtag be? On, on I want to get four or five billboard ideas before the end of the day that we can actually execute, however it is that we execute them. All right. So the hashtag is Bills, Bills, Billboard. No. So That's two not, Bills. No, it's. Bill Gill's Bill's Billboard. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That one's nice and easy and memorable. <laughs> Hashtag Bill Gill's Bill's Billboard. Billy, you're safe. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Penn and Teller said so. See you, Gary.